Turning now to Egypt, where several tugboats had to help a large container ship after it got stuck in the Suez Canal. Haley Ott is following this story as well as others from around uh, the world this morning for us. What can you tell us about the situation? Good morning, Anne-Marie. Yes, we're starting out in Egypt, where one of the world's most important shipping lanes, the Suez Canal, has been blocked. Yesterday at about 8 a.m. local time, a massive 1,300-foot tanker called the Ever Given ran aground in the middle of the canal. The company that operates the tanker, which is one of the largest in the world, said the vessel was hit by a sudden strong wind. Luckily, no one has re been reported injured. The ship then got stuck sideways, completely cutting off the shortest sea link between Asia and Europe. Dozens of other vessels that were transiting through the canal are now also stuck on either side. Experts say it could take days to move the Ever Given, which was heading for the Netherlands. The jam could have a major effect on global trade, as the Suez Canal is a vital route for transporting things like manufactured goods, fuel, and food. Now, on to Brazil, where the Supreme Court has ruled that the judge who presided over the corruption trial of former President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, known as Lula, was biased. The ruling paves the way for Lula to run for president again in the upcoming 2022 presidential election against right-wing incumbent Jair Bolsonaro. Lula had been convicted of corruption in 2017 and consequently sidelined from Brazil's 2018 elections when the then right-wing fringe politician Bolsonaro first came to power. The Supreme Court ruling also throws into question the wide-ranging anti-corruption work of the former judge Sergio Moro, who, after Bolsonaro's victory, was appointed as his justice minister. Now to Saudi Arabia. The UN Special Rapporteur behind the investigation into the death of journalist Jamal Khashoggi says that she received a death threat from a top Saudi official. Agnes Kalamar told Britain's Guardian newspaper that her colleagues at the UN had witnessed the official threaten to, quote, take care of her. In 2019, Kalamar's investigation concluded that there was credible evidence that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and other Saudi officials were responsible for Khashoggi's murder. She told The Guardian that the threat hadn't affected her work. We end in Bangladesh this morning, where a devastating fire in a Rohingya refugee camp has killed at least 15 people, including three children. At least 400 people are missing, and 560 have been injured in the blaze, which broke out Monday and continued into the night. The search for victims is still ongoing, and tens of thousands have been displaced. Bangladesh has been sheltering more than a million Rohingya refugees from neighboring Myanmar, the majority of whom fled a violent military crackdown there in 2017. The UN has said that that crackdown had, quote, genocidal intent. Bangladesh has been eager to send the Rohingya back to Myanmar, but several attempts to repatriate them under a joint agreement have failed because they refuse to go, still fearing for their lives. Tragically, relief workers have said that some of the devastation from Monday's fire could have been avoided if not for barbed wire that was installed around the perimeter of the fence, which prevented people from escaping. Anne-Marie? All right, Haley, thank you very much.